Shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the elders, and the bishops, the great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Peace to the 144,000 and the rest of the whole free elect. I'm the brother Kaya from GMS Indianapolis, branch of Indiana. The other two is uh, GMS Gary. That page is uh, actually GMS It Will Not Terry 2. And we have GMS Bloomington 444, which... Uh, that's the Bloomington camp. But anyway, a quick lesson on something I was thinking about last night that I didn't get a chance to get to to about now is uh, the precepts is the easy part, you know, as far as uh, uh, how can I uh, how can I put it, you know, coming into the truth, coming into the knowledge you be well, you should be. But most of the time you be hungry, you know, it'd be like a. It be it's a lot of new information, you know. A lot of us, you know, so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans grew up in Christianity anyway. You know, some of us might have been interested in the Bible and we read it on our own and might have liked church. A lot of us probably didn't, but we was always, you know, connected to it in some way, shape, or form. A lot of us, you know, some brothers might have been grew up Muslim or whatever, but for the most part here in America. On average, so-called Negro, let you know, Native American connected to Christianity in some type of way. But then when you get open up to this knowledge, to this information, you be uh, you be hungry. You know, you be like, well, damn, I ain't here. It is. I don't have this Bible. It's been sitting on my grandma mantle <laughs> on Psalm 23 for all these years. But I didn't know that it was that this is what it meant, like the depth of the meaning of it. So you be reading, you be uh, studying. I mean, you be ravished. You be, let me grab a scripture real quick. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. God damn it. T. Okay, let me see. Proverbs. This is uh, Proverbs, the fifth chapter. Now, when you read Proverbs, the fifth chapter, all right, a lot of the, um, God damn it, I'm drawing a blank. A lot of the illustrations, a lot of the analogies, <clears throat> it's talking about the truth. It's likening the truth as, as your wife in this particular scripture I'm going to read. Um, Proverbs 5 and 18. It says, let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth, right? So the wife of, your, of thy youth that's talking about this truth, this knowledge, all right? Because when you newly married, when you're newly wed, or wife or girlfriend, whatever, say y'all both virgins and y'all, you know, you both engage in, in activity or whatever, right? You always do it. You always, you know, you always excited. You always want to be, you know, together. You always want to come together and you always want to engage, you know, and that's how it be when you're young, all right? But the scripture says to be, uh, you got to be constantly like that, you know? Let me see if I get ravished. Yes, the next verse, right, right, right. Verse 19, let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. You know, because like a new woman... You know, uh, the newness can wear off after a while. Yeah, you've been together 10, 15, 20 years. It don't, it, the, the, the same physical passion, oftentimes, the same physical passion is not there in the beginning. But the scripture is telling you, look, let it always be like that. All right, because this is wisdom that it's talking about. But back to the point I was making, yeah, when you knew in the truth, that's, is when you knew in the truth, the, you know, the Bible, wisdom, this knowledge is like your woman. So when you get a new woman, you know, it's always exciting, all right? But there's a balance, just like, just like relationships, you know, the, the truth is a relationship too. It's a, there's, a whole, there's a whole balance to it. It ain't just about the, uh, uh, like, in the, like in the relationship, right? It ain't all about the popping. It ain't all about the sex, all right? There's other aspects to it. And just like the truth, it ain't all about the precepts. It ain't all about the breakdowns, which don't get it twisted. 
That is indeed important. Okay. All right. Matter of fact, let's grab some scriptures on that. <clears throat> matter of fact, I'll start with Psalm first. Then I get to Isaiah. And there was one more that just came to my head. Yep. Yep. The proverb. Psalm Isaiah Proverbs. Okay. Let me see. Psalm 119, and Lord willing, this is making sense. Psalm 119, 104. It says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false, way, uh, every false way. So the Bible interprets itself. All right. So the, the precepts are already in here. All right. And by learning them and not just knowing them, you know, like on repeat, but understanding them. Like me and one of the uh, one of the elder brothers, we got like a sand amongst ourselves. If you write and you don't know why you write, then you're wrong. You got to know the why. All right, you got to know the whole shebang. Okay, so let's jump to Isaiah. <laughs> like you ask somebody, uh, you ask somebody a question, and then they 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 give you a guess, right? Not an educated guess, but a guess. A broken clock is right twice a day, right? But it's still a broken clock. So they give you a guess, but they don't know how they came up with it. They don't know. They can't lead you nowhere with the answer they gave. Well, no, that don't count. And that's how that's how I see it. Isaiah 29 and... Man, it was 28. This is Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom... Shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Right. Because. Pardon me. When you're a babe, the meat is too much for you to handle. It's too much for you to digest. So you start off on milk. So that's like unto the scriptures. The deeper things, the deeper knowledge of it is too much right now. So you got to start off with simple things. That translate in today's terms, some of the more milk scriptures is, okay, who, who are the Israelites? All right, who are the Israelites today? So-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. How do you prove that? All right, Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28, Job 9 and 24. All right, uh, uh, Revelation 13 and 9. All right, uh, 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 Joel, the third chapter. All right, uh, you sold uh, the, the, the children of Judah to the Grecians. All right. Knowing how to navigate the, the, the scriptures and then building up the way a child builds up. You, know, you drink the milk and you add a little cereal then you add a little yam and you and they eat little peaches. All right. And then they get then they start to get teeth and they go for verse 10 for precept. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Here a little, there a little. Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha. Uh, this line, corroborate with that line. Like this scripture right here. And um, some scriptures might have like, I just read verse 9 and 10. They got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, verse 9 got five lines. Verse 10 got four lines. Sometimes it, uh, the whole verse, it just might be a portion in that verse. That 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 uh, aligns with another portion, all right. It's just how it is. But uh, uh, back to the example, just the the memorization of the precept part, the memorization of the scriptures and and piecing the precept. That's that's more on the easier level. Now, when it the uh, how can I say, the application of it is now you cooking with gas, like the uh, the elders down here in Indiana. They used to always say. You gotta live this truth. You gotta, you gotta. Uh, uh, is that what they just say? I'm trying to think. It. I want to say it exactly how they say it. And and for a long time, I ain't really understand fully what they meant by that. But they used to just always say, it. and it's gonna be like that too, man. Sometimes when you knew in the truth, you're gonna hear a lot of things that ain't gonna be no explanation to them, and it's gonna come later. You know, it's gonna come later. It might come. Years later, you know, but he used to always say you got to live this truth. You can't just be quoting the scriptures and, you know, not actually performing because you're going to be faced with uh, situations 
where you get where you gotta execute. All right. Let me, in fact, let me go to Proverbs. Proverbs one, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Perceive. All right. Perceive. <clears throat> going to the word perception. So whatever your perception is, that's going to influence your action. So you got to read these scriptures, understand these parables, these proverbs, which give you a more righteous perception, a better discernment to, to, to act better in different situations. Now, what, what was that? Proverbs 1. It says, uh, I just want to see what they got for perceived. Let me see. <clears throat> but young, to discern. Consider. Yeah, you know, you consider. Yeah, you walking down the street. All right. You see a pile of, 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 of dog crap. What you going to do? <laughs> you going to go around. All right. But that's a simple analogy. But hell. Yeah. That's like the that's like living this life, having little having little potholes and little obstacles in life. And some of them is easier to clear and easier to notice. But the more discernment you get, the more knowledge you get, the better you're able to perceive danger and avoid it. Now, it might be a pile of crap. Boom. But then the, the, the next danger might be a, a slippery, a slippery ice patch. And then it, it might be hidden. All right. So it get it, uh, certain um, certain situations more harder and harder and tougher and tougher to judge. But what you got the scriptures, that's when you get counsel and that's when you get advice, you know. But anyway, OK, uh, to understand with the mind, to observe, give heed to. And then the, the giving heed is a uh, that be the thing. See, you might know it might be in the in the back of your head. You might be well aware of what the scriptures say you should do, but are you giving heed to it? Let me see how many scriptures, how many times the scripture says, "Take heed." Seventy-seven times. See, that's beautiful. Seventy-seven. All right. Look, Genesis thirty-one twenty-four, and the Most High came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, "Take heed." That thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. I mean, basically, watch your step. Consider. All right. Exodus 10, 28. And Pharaoh said unto him, get thee from me. Take heed to thyself. See my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face. Thou shalt die. Let me see. Deuteronomy 4 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. To take heed is you 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 playing co close attention. You're paying close attention. All right. Like when you uh, if you ever did any type of construction work, uh any type of building. You got to take heed to do it correctly because if you don't, the shit going to collapse on top of you. <laughs> so back in the Proverbs, it says, uh, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety <clears throat> to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. All right. So that's what it's for. That's what, you know, that's what Proverbs start out as, you know, but ultimately the whole scripture is, is there to, to do that. And so then when you face with situations, you execute the scriptures and then you find yourself in, in, in I, I keep saying the word situations, but hell, so be it. But uh, you find yourself in situations and you don't know why it's, it's not going in your favor because you ain't executing the scriptures. Like I give you an example. You might just be having a a, 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 a a regular conversation with somebody. But you talking too goddamn much. You don't got to just blurt every fucking thing you know. All right? That's something... I'm a victim of that. I used to do that shit all the time. 
All right. But that's what the scripture there for. It says, look, this is this is to help you. You know, you can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. And that's when the Lord come and send a correction. Now, let me give you an example about the talking too much. Uh, let me see. This is so this is Sirach 32 and 8. It says, matter of fact, it's part of seven. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Matter of fact, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I grab that, uh, before I grab that, mm, okay. See, look at Sirach. Look at Sirach. It just teach you. <laughs> Sirach teach you so much manners and grace and elegance, man. Let me see. Look. Uh, let me start at uh, Sirach 21 and 20. A fool lifted up his voice with laughter, but a wise man do it scarce smile a little. Learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his arm. A foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. See, now you might innocently just uh, just think that's all right. All right. But no, you got to be uh, you got to be you got to take heed to yourself to execute these scriptures. It says uh, verse 23. Yeah, you you wait to be invited to somebody's house, and then when you do get invited, like I, I give you example, I had a brother. All right, man, if I don't say his name, Elder Mathot, this shit, I don't care. Uh, yeah, uh, I've been knowing that brother, that elder, the young elder, since I first came across the brothers. Like the very first time I came, saw a camp live and in action, he was he was there. All right teaching answering my questions uh him and uh, and other elders and brothers of course you know but i'm using him as an example so i've basically been knowing him the, as, as long as i've been in the truth and when i got my house and he came over when he you know when, when he finally came over he was he was acting like a a a well let me word it correctly i don't want to be misunderstood but he was acting like a guest like a guest that didn't know me, you know, like I'm, uh, he come in, and he wait, he waited by the door. He waited to be, to be invited to sit down, you know, and I'm not thinking nothing of it. I'm just like, what I say, I say, hey, but, 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 yeah, go. It's my bad, bro, sit down, yeah, have a seat. You know, you know, how, you know, how brothers are, you know, but that brother, that elder was, he was executing the scriptures, man. All right. It says, uh. A fool will peep in at the door into the house, but he that is well nurtured will stand without. Yeah, have some, uh, uh, be civil. Like peeping in at people's door. Because that's something people do, you know? But here it is, we got the scriptures to, 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 <laughs> to tell you not to do that, right? It says, it is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door, but a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. And not that just that one, it'd be all of them. So when you find yourself getting cussed out for shit you don't understand, that's what's more than that's what it is. They grieved with you not executing the scriptures. It says the lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. You telling other people business and see, you talking about shit that ain't got no concern of you. Got a whole opinion too. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in a balance. Their words are weighed out in their head before they come out. All right. You constantly in your head. OK. In the truth. To the point where be, you're trying to get it to become second, second nature. All right. You're getting rid of the old man where you would just blabber whatever the hell you feel at any given time. Joke how, joke how you want to joke. A lot, a lot of that shit in the world that we thought was harmless and wasn't no big deal, that shit wasn't right. Joking any type of way, saying any type of thing, 
to, 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 to elders and even younger brothers. All right? You got to respect younger brothers too. It ain't just the, the, the apostles and the bishops and the elders. They get the respect that they had. Everybody under this is just, well, fuck them. No, you have some brothers like that. Then, uh, 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 I'll put it like this. Some brothers, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't here with us no more. A part of GMS that is, I'm speaking of some guys that used to be like that, man. Respect the person. The scriptures tell you how to interact. It says, uh, 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 treat the, um, you treat the brothers like brothers. All right. You got a brother. I don't know if you, you ever come across this video. You got a family, especially you got a younger brother. You got you to gotta look out for him. Oftentimes, if you ain't looking out for him, <laughs> you get your ass in trouble. Can't be demeaning and uh, belittling. You got to be building them up. And then you and treat the elders as, as fathers. Would you talk to your father like that? Would you think of him like that? Would you? No. But you would be trying to, you know, stay on his good side. All right. It says, uh, let me see. The heart of, yeah, this is the point I wanted. <laughs> the heart of fools is in their mouth. So your heart is your mind. So you just, you just always simp, just always fucking blurting out what's in your mind. Without weighing it out all the time. Now, that's not to say you just got to sit around stiff and rigid. Can't let your hair down and have a good time. But you got to learn how to do that. Because the way you did that in the world, a lot of times might disagree with the way to, to, to be in, in the scriptures. Because I know where I came from, like my, my neighborhood. I'm from, I'm from East Chicago, all right, Indiana. And it's by like the Gary area, the Hammond area, whatever. This is a lot of, it's just an obnoxious fucking community, man. It's a proud, obnoxious, okay, poor. Then the scriptures say that too. The scripture said, I hate a poor man that is proud. You got a lot of these, a lot of these little cities, little Jake neighborhoods, they still, they don't got nothing but fucking, they don't got nothing but pride. That's all they fucking got. The fucking the, the water the, the poison and the, the the soil poison and crime and shit. Jake ain't got shit. You know, just be a, a obnoxious and rude and mean and be a lot of shit. You grew up in environments like that. A lot of shit might not be a big deal to you. You might not even notice it. Oh yeah, but yeah, come to the truth though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what is that? Proverbs says. Let me see. Remind me later. Let me see. Oh, you gotta be, you gotta be one hundred percent correct in the blue letter. They ain't gonna help you. And I'm gonna read this in another version too. Proverbs eighteen and seventeen. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. Yeah, you might think you in the right, you know. But then, no, nah, you got brothers and you got other more experienced men coming to uh, steer you in the right direction. And that might be harsh. All right. Let me see what some other. Um, see what some other versions say. Let me see what the NLT say. The first to speak in court sounds right until the cross examination begins. Yeah. And how do you what's the what's the, the, the rubric for the cross examination? The scriptures. Now, let me see. Let me see some real quick. Uh, uh, ah, uh, it's another one though. Uh, let me see. Yeah, well, if it, if I, maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe that's it. Okay. Yeah, it says uh, the heart of the fools is in their mouth, right? 
but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. So before they let something come out their mouth, they twirling it. All right. They twirling it round. They, they, they filtering it. All right. And sometimes a lot of times the shit, the shit you, uh, what you want to say, it ain't necessary. It ain't got to be said. All right. Now, where was I at? Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, Sirach 32 and 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. It might not be a need for you to speak. You just, you just oh, well, I know some shit too. Well, look at me. Up. Let me show how much I know. Which that happens a lot. That happens a lot in the Jake community. But you in the truth now. If you got something to add, then add it. All right. It's like making the um. It's, it's like making a dish or something. You, you can overdo it with too much, too much, too many ingredients, too many seasonings. Seasonings. Proverbs got to be subtle. Be subtle. You know, might not be a. It might not be a need for you to speak. Speak. Remember, remember what happened with Job. When Job friends came and the and the and the, and the, and the um. And the young man was there. That young man didn't speak to towards the end of the chapter. There the whole time. He didn't say nothing towards the end of the chapter, though. Now, who knows how long that, 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 that went on? I think the scriptures might say, but I can't recall right now. They could have they could have been there for weeks. All right. That could have, you know how the scriptures are, you know, that that could have been weeks. All right. You know, with everything, with everything Job lost, he could have been in mourning. He could have been in mourning for at least a month. So that could have been that. That probably wasn't, you know, just a, a, a few days exchange. And he didn't say nothing towards the end. He says, uh, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Yeah. Look, somebody, it's your opportunity to speak. Which you got, God damn it, speak. He says, let thy speech be short. Comprehending much and few words, because that's when you truly got understanding, man. All right, when it don't take that much to explain it. When somebody know what they talk, when somebody know what they talking about, it is not. It's not going. Oftentimes, more than not, it ain't going to take a whole lot to explain it, man. It's just not. Look at the way the apostles and the elders and the bishops and the brothers teach, man. It be so simple. You'd be like, damn, he just, he just simplified that just like that. And you get it. It's like Habakkuk says, make it plain upon tables. He says, uh, it says, let thy speech be short, comprehending much and few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. That's how the scripture, that's how scripture is telling you to be. Be as one that knoweth. And hold it his tongue. See, see, you're being shaped. When you execute the way the scriptures tell you to execute, you're being shaped. You're being, you're you're fitting the mold of Yahweh Shai. Ain't nothing. Look, see, the, the Lord said it's, it's hard to go up against the pricks. You get to doing you, you just do you. I'ma do me a A. I'm old. I'm getting old. Old ass, uh, I think Rocco song. Yeah, you keep you doing you and doing how you want to do it, and you're gonna catch friction. All right, and you and it, and it might seem like see I brought up the example see to the average person this might seem like a a very insignificant thing like what all he did all he doing is talking no mm -mm. it's more than that scriptures tell you if you're gonna do something you're gonna do it like this but the scripture says look we trying to be the we trying to be the sons of God okay. So how would a son, how would a son of God, come on, man, I'm, I need some, what, IT, to the blue letter, Romans 8 and 29, it says, for whom he did foreknow, all right, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So you got to be conformed to the image of his son. You got to fit his mold, all right, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, all right. So, are we? Do we all got our individual personalities? Well, yeah, of course. But everything ain't 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 goddamn personality. We can all execute the scriptures and have 
individual personalities. Okay. He says, uh, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. All right. You don't make yourself equal in talk. That go one. So rock 13 and 11. Man, it's uh Look, see, this is more, this is more, you know, uh, knowledge. So rock 13 and 9. If thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself. And so much the more will he invite thee. I was talking to a brother that, uh, yesterday. And he was just giving, I don't even know if he aware of the scripture. He should be. But, uh, why well, ain't gonna say it like that? He's his younger brother, whatever, right? But, uh, uh, he was telling me a story and he, the story he was telling me, he was basically executing the scripture. Okay. He, it says, if thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself and so much the more will he invite thee. And that's what happened to them. He was invited of a mighty man, an elder or something, right? And he was kind of like in a, in, a, in a background to an extent. He wasn't like all up in the forefront. And they was like, hey, come here. Hey, hey bring, you know, and then they, they brought him forth. Like, hey, come on. Come here, man. Huh? Have a seat. Have a drink. What's up? Man? How you doing? You know? It says, press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back. And I've seen that too. You want to sit up? <laughs> fuck. Fuck, I've seen that too. That happened to me. <laughs> That happened to me. <laughs> Shit. I was, uh, uh, it's like, man, I was uh, fresh in the truth. You, you know how it be. Uh, the elders around, they going, going to the scriptures deep. I ain't trying to miss nothing. So I'm all in the mix. You know, I wasn't saying too much, but I'm, I'm in the mix. I'm in the, and they like, hey, man. They sending me off to run errands and shit. <laughs> sending me off to do shit. I'm like, man, I want to sit and, you know, I want to, you know, but hey, it is what it is. You know, it says, uh, it says, press not out upon him, lest thou be put back. Stand not far off, lest thou be forgotten. Yeah, that happened too. You, Jake be fucking, you, you, everybody in each other presence and shit, enjoying each other company. The brother, your ass outside somewhere. I don't like that shit. Which that's, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Every situation different, but brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, everybody kicking it, enjoying it, each other company. And you got this just lone wolf all the time, though. Not just one time, not for just 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, 30 minutes maybe, but for the goddamn bulk of the, the get together, his ass in his car somewhere. It says, uh, <laughs> Affect not to be made equal unto him in talk, and believe not his many words, for with much communication will he tempt thee, and smiling upon thee will get out thy secrets. But cruelly he will lay up thy words, and will not spare to do thee hurt, and to put thee in prison. Yeah, and you gotta be careful when you, like, at the workplace, and, you know, you navigating in the world, too, you know? You don't fucking, you got, you got a family, all right? A spiritual family to connect with and uh, share your troubles with and get advice from. You get the you you taking that you start taking those risks with people in the world where that's what you open yourself up to. All right, him cruelly laying up your words. <laughs> All right, and when he when he get a chance, betraying you. Okay, where was I at? Where was I at? Was that Sirach 32 and 7? Yep. It says, uh, verse 9. If thou be among great men, apostles, bishops, elders, senior brothers, but more so, you know, apostles, bishops, elders, make not thyself equal with them. Yeah, don't you, yeah you're going tit for tat in conversation. You should be listening way more than you uh, speaking. And it ain't the age thing, all right? You might be around the same age or maybe a little bit older, but they've been in this truth longer. So just the experiences they got along, just minor experiences, the numerous experiences. Hell, sometimes you forget some shit that happened and then remember. 
You know? It says, uh, yeah, you 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 get the missing out on that. And I've seen it, man. You 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 fucking you there, one of the bishop or elder talking to some, then a the brother, hey, I might even done it. Shit. I just just being honest. But somebody might be talking and just they going in and you know, somebody just come out and just interject and now the uh attention get redirected and refocused and everybody was like damn i wanted him to finish that you know it says uh it says uh yeah if thou be among great men make not thyself equal with them and when ancient men are in place use not many words before the thunder goeth the light before the thunder Go with lightning. Yeah, so before you hit that crack, you see that 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 streak of light in the sky. And before a shame faced man shall go favor. What's the what is what a shame face? To be humble. All right. You can see, look, this you can see. <laughs> look, man. The scripture says, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12 says, the word of the Lord is quick and powerful. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab that. <coughs> Let me see. I used to have this, this when I my first notebook, like taking notes in the truth. This scripture, like, was the title of my notes. Hebrews four and twelve. It says, "For the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is quick. I mean, it's alive. <laughs> this is real. It says, and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword." Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So look, man, you can't hide. All right. Every brother in this truth that believe in the Lord got a got a level of spiritual perception, man. And the, and, 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 the, and the apostles and the bishops and the elders, they got they got higher ones. All right. But we all got a level. So you can see what the you can see what's on a fucking brother oftentimes. Shame faced, and you can't you can't fake you can't you can't fake being shame faced. Alright? Shame faced is the opposite of pride. Alright? It said before a shame faced man shall go favor. What does it mean to be shame faced? To not have a high opinion upon yourself. Alright? Like the scripture, the first time you hear shame phase, I think it's it's in regard to Leah. Well, no, it's not. But it's but I'll use that as a comparison. All right. Let me see. Here. Genesis 29 and 17. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. So, so Rachel was a man's woman. All right. Rachel was what a man wanted in a woman. Whatever man that she had it, the youth, the beauty, the, the, the body, the, the hair, the, the oh, whatever. However you however you put it, that's what it was. She was a man's woman. But what does it say about Leah? All right. It says she was tender eyed. Let's see what they say for tender eyed. Uh, tender, soft, delicate, weak, weak of heart, timid. All right. Weak of heart. She didn't have a high opinion about herself. You know how women are. All right. You got uh, uh, your friends. Well, how it used to be, how it used to be, all right? Not now, how it used to be. The, 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 the not attractive friend knew she wasn't attractive and she, she acted and responded in, in, in turn. She didn't act like how these women act now, all right? When a girl, back in the day, when a girl was unattractive, that's how she, that's how she walked around in the earth. I remember my, my friend, um, my friend, when we was younger in middle school, he had a little sister. She used to like hide. She used to make. She used to hide herself from us. Make sure we didn't see us. 
And if she had to, like if we was in his room playing the game and she had to walk by, she would put her hand, she would hide her face. All right? She was shamefaced. Now, how does that translate to, to being spiritually shamefaced as the man in the truth? Not being pride, walking in humility, not have a high opinion of yourself because you know some scriptures, you know some breakdowns. Or even uh, whatever, what, whatever the hell the reason to have, you know, have a, 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 a give you a, a unreasonable uh, level of confidence. Uh, all right. Because there ain't nothing wrong with confidence. But when it when, but when confidence becomes unreasonable, that's when it's pride. Like, all right, damn me. All right, all right, all right. Now, this is too much now. But anyway, let me see if there was more on that. Uh, Sirach 32 and 7. Uh, that's where we started from. Yep, that was it. So, hopefully, Lord willing, that was an edifying lesson to the whole free leg. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakudah, Shalom.